solid crack. Solid crack. Sometimes we don't get good cracks around here. I try to stay up on the crack. <laughs> All you can do is have the best crack you can. Well, when you're doing it live and you're not just emulating the sound, it's you right. Know, you gotta get what get what you get. Hey, sometimes you throw interceptions. Sometimes. Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna get into a little Elijah McGuire here for your pleasure. Our boy uh, Bryce over on patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. Hit us up. He's an OG over there. Shout out to Bryce. Huge support from our man over there. He's on top of things naturally, as most patrons are. Right. We've helped we've we've helped Bryce pull off some moves here the last couple weeks. He's got some he's got a couple solid squads we've been helping him out with. I know we tried to get you in and out of the intro there, taking it easy on Patreon. But again, we appreciate all of the guys that have jumped over there to help us out, contribute to this fund here, keep this thing rolling, keep the good times going. Every and, week uh, it grows, and if, if you're not over there getting it in over there, you're missing out. You are missing out. And, and there's a bunch of for, people getting it. For the $5 or more that you might want to give us, it's the value, I think, is unprecedented. The guys that are over there, that they hit us up and say they appreciate all of the attention and the time that we put in with the hitting people back. Right, pretty dang quickly with trade offers that might be sitting on the table for you, um, and then obviously we got you know the questions that people ask us for the for the show every week that are more of a hey what do you how do you feel about this? But sometimes people hit us with hey I got a trade offer on the table, you know instant trade trade right. reactions from us is pretty cool for not very much money. Right. Well, there's a community page over on Patreon where you can basically post anything you want as a patron. You can ask, and that's where we're getting a bunch of trade questions from. And then every week, we hit up everybody with a post asking for ideas or topics, things you want to hear about on the show. And uh, if it's a good one, we'll bring it over here to the free show, which is kind of what we're doing today. Uh, Bryce hit us up, said... What is the outlook on Elijah McGuire going forward? Because, well, holy shit, an RB2 out of nowhere, basically. Right. Uh, not, not that, it, I mean, there's plenty of good ones over there. Sure. We just, but this is very prevalent, it's right? Very, holy shit, an RB2 out of nowhere. It's very present. Exactly. It's very present. He was on the IR. He's not here. All of a sudden, he's back, and then he's catching passes, and he right. looks good. So. If you watch that game, it looked better than what the numbers ended up being. Right. Exactly. And it's a pretty terrible offensive display from the Jets. Oh. Um, and then, so you got. Uh, we're going to really get into how Elijah McGuire looked and some good stats from last year and some rest of season outlook and dynasty outlook here. Um, and this is going to be a pretty cool little uh, segment in time for the Elijah McGuire owners and the people that don't own him and looking to go get him because Sam Darnold's hurt. So uh, struggling Jets offense, Seb Darnold's got a, a walking boot and he's probably not supposed to play this week. And if you got the veteran coming in, if McCown comes out there slinging the rock all over the place, I'm not saying it's definitely going to happen, but that's what he did last year. If he comes out there slinging the rock all over the place, you might have this one week or two. I don't know how the, how long the absence is going to be out of Darnold from his foot, but if McCown comes out there slinging the rock all over the place and, and Elijah McGuire looks good, we might have a very limited window here to go and bring it, put Elijah McGuire on your roster. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying that could happen. And then going forward... The Jets looks like, <clears throat> excuse me, they're they're if they're str- if they struggle the way they have been for the next couple of weeks into as the doldrums of the season comes around for a struggling team, then Elijah McGuire may not necessarily blow up. So your buy window may be wide open for two months. We don't know. Sure. But as we talk about him, I think we're going to make a pretty decent case for why you should go pick him up for what he can do for you. Maybe not necessarily this year, but this is Dynasty. Right. And grabbing him now before he puts up too many PPR numbers is the, is the key. Right. And and this is Dynasty, and that, you set that up perfectly uh, because it is the Jets, and I don't know how excited you are about any of those players right exactly. now. But, I mean, this guy came out of nowhere and got you dang 10 – PPR points and I know plenty of teams and rosters that are just praying for some RB2 help right now so he's kind of like maybe can help you out some you know sure. moving forward but let's uh let's check it out so you mentioned Dynasty right this is obviously Dynasty Bilal Powell who's who's been a staple in the New York presence for a IR, while he's on IR and his contract is up okay so he's out of there next year uh Crowell just signed a three-year deal a banger. So he's never really been much in the passing game. Even though he did get a preseason, he started out wide and caught a slant in the preseason and mm-hmm. made some noise with it. And then you're like, okay, well, maybe they... But really, what we saw out of Elijah McGuire this week, those were his plays. Right. Those, Elijah was definitely lining up out wide. 
He's he had a nice play last year, lined up out wide. One of the highlights, and he's, multiple times he was lined up out wide in this last game. This this week, that's what uh, I mean. I'm right. sorry to sorry to take off on a tangent of what you were talking about with with old boy over there. Well, see, the and Crowell, Crowell, Crowell is, is is underrated in, in my he opinion. He is. He's, he's he underrated. deserves some more. Uh, it's not his fault, right? No. He's a little banged up now. He's got a foot injury, and it's it's. I think it's showed on the field. He's not quite as as explosive as he can be because he could pop off some big runs, and yeah. he's not the worst in the passing game. But he's definitely not. A well, savant. it goes back to it's kind of those. It's the the the, uh, the funny joke that Casey likes to make is he has hands, right? You know, so like you can't catch you can't a ball catch. if you don't get a target. You know, so like, and I'm not saying that Crowell is out there earning m- bunches of targets. But if they do, if they do throw in the ball, which they did this year a couple times and in preseason, and he looked like you said very underrated on his ability to catch that ball and not look terrible. I mean, I just mean from an overall standpoint. I know, but I'm saying, but like you know, it's when we're when you're putting together as the you're trying to put together consistent points every week, and Crowell has been the definition of inconsistency with his long runs and then you know just banging between the tackles for 50 total yards. You're just looking for those catches and consistent catches, and that's where we're going to get to with McGuire. Sure. This dude is dripping in PPR points and and potential. His PPR potential is just off the charts. It is. Uh, he he played. He had 105 touches in 2017. Uh, he had 240 snaps. 128 of them were running routes. So that's a lot of routes ran on a limited. You know, especially. I mean, I guess 240 snaps isn't the worst. There's, you know, you. It's, it's not a ton. Well, it's not a ton of snaps, but it is a good route per snap rate. Right. And like, and he's a young man doing that. And you told me before we started about how many catches he had in college and right. the production he had on those catches. 130 so, catches for 1,394 yards and 10 receiving touchdowns. Right. That's 10 yards a catch right there. It's not like he's, you know got half you know sometimes you see some guys that just get some dump downs and they average five or six seven yards a catch this dude's doing some work when he gets the ball in space at 10 yards a rip and he comes into the league that's what his job was as a rookie you know was to catch passes to be out there maybe he didn't feel only only 26 targets 17 receptions but he was getting the routes ran like you said half the time half of his snaps he was running a route he took that 10 yards per catch into the nfl though with 177 yards on 17 catches So setting the stage for Elijah McGuire, he again he just comes in off of IR, mm-hmm. but which is a foot in the injury. last month's DLF, he's at two thirty eight in the rankings, mm-hmm. which is understandable because anybody that did a mock draft last month who didn't give a crap about Elijah McGuire, so we can only expect that to just skyrocket a hundred points. So let's say you go up a hundred spots, you're at a hundred and thirty spot, you're in the twelfth, thirteenth ish round right there. Uh, well, 12 times 12 is 144. So let's say you're in the 10th or 11th round for just, like you said, RB2 out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. If McGuire's hanging around in the 10th or 11th round startup value today, there's only he can only go up from here, right? I, I, I think so. I think so. I mean, there's nothing to say they won't draft another running back next year. That's a good point. Uh, Crowell's the kind of guy that needs the volume. He kind of gets better as the game goes on. He does to me present some of an issue but we're again we're, we're really focusing on the ppr floor here which i think he looks great running the ball as well i mean anytime he's got the ball in his hands like he's he's fairly fast he has a he ran a four five two at the combine he's got solid burst you put that on a 214 pound frame and the results are fairly impressive right i mean you can't bust off a 69 yard touchdown run unless you've got a second gear of sorts to to keep away from those secondary defenders right well i mean at 510 215 let's give him another pound because he's, right. he's a grown-ass man sure at 510 215 and with those receiving chops with the route i mean it and then this just this week with his first game back three out of four of those catches were from being lined up maybe two out of four of those catches was being from lined up out wide right it's one not, was a screen and right. one was a, a route from the backfield okay and then the other two were literally from out playing right. in the wide out position the slot and out running, wide. right and then running you know some ends and some slants right. and like that's again that's his role on this team and good catches hands he catches away from his body and then he's making defenders miss off the rip hasn't been hasn't played any real like action that matters with his rookie quarterback 
and he gets right his first game eligible, like you said, that the before the game, they asked the coach how he was going to mix back in with Trenton Cannon, the rookie running back who had tried to fill this role for a couple of weeks, and the coach said it would be a mixture, and then – he didn't have a touch, what, halfway through the game or the start of the fourth quarter or something like that? Right. I don't know that he got a touch at all. Right. So, I mean, Elijah That was McGuire the start of the fourth quarter comes, when they said that. Okay. That's when the announcer said he doesn't even have a touch. Coaches are such, they're such BSers. Right. They asked, because the announcer was like, we asked the offense coordinator, what are you going to do now that you got Elijah back and McGuire and uh, Cannon? And the guy's like, it's going to be, we'll work a balance. It'll be a balance. And yeah. And not a single carry. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I, I could confirm that. I, I don't know that he didn't get a single Well, starting carry, the fourth but, quarter, he didn't have a touch. Right. And in a very competitive game. And obviously, you talk about a competitive game. This is the Dolphins got up. Even the blurb on Roto World tells you this, that at the end of the game, Elijah McGuire had a couple touches late in the game to pad his stats. This was a nasty game for the Jets offensively. And even Darnold apologized after the game, said he played terrible. He's got to be playing better than that. Two decent defenses, the Jets and the Dolphins. Two pretty bad offenses, the Jets and the Dolphins. And they right. mixed, they got together and what you for thought. one terrible match. What, what you thought would happen <laughs> made for an ugly game. Right. And Cannon had one catch for 15 yards. Just okay. To, Thank you for So this is basically, this is, you know, you have to strike right now before the iron gets hot. Because obviously, it would have been really, really nice of us to come on here three, four weeks ago and to tell you to go buy Elijah McGuire while he was on the IR. But we can't live in the past. What we see him do is come right back into his pass catching role in this offense and ascending yet bumpy ride. They're just trying to get off the run ray, runway and they're mm-hmm. hitting a little turbulence before they even get up in the air. But it's a young quarterback who shows a lot of promise, versatile receiving core who's been nothing but banged up. Good Herndon's looking good at tight end. Sure. You see the future, the building blocks for this offense. And like I was saying when we first started talking about him, it could be really ugly for patches. So you're not going to buy Elijah McGuire right now to plug him in next week and, and get that 25 PPR points. But if you if for some reason with McCown he was to get 25 PPR points on Sunday, or you know, maybe they play on Monday. I don't know when they play, but you know what I mean. If this next week he blows up, his name's all over the radar. So we wanted to come out here this week after seeing the usage and the idea and the fact that he's out there lined up out wide. And I don't even want to say it like this, but in a Le'Veon Bell-esque type role and just, like you say, he looks good in between the tackles. He's not going to wow you with speed. He's he's not straight up fast, but he's very balanced. He's very strong. He's got big looking legs. His legs look huge. And his pad level is great. His pad level solid. And he is... He's, it's really hard. To, uh, there was a couple plays in that game where it was just blown up in the backfield. Sure. But once he starts moving forward, that 215 pounds is play, looks to me like he's 220. Right. You know, he's playing tough. And, with, and it's 510, so he's not like he's 6'1. Exactly. He's, he's not like out, a string bean. Yes. He's so, not a thin 215. He's right. a bulky 215. So, right. And you give me a bulky 215 pound young guy who walks right in out of, the, out of college into a pass catching role on the offense, and the guy that has hands like glue. You gotta want even if it never pans out. What you can buy him for right now is peanuts. Right. So what you're doing is taking a swing without having to give up. You know, this is not hey, like we had we talked all all. This is not a mid level boss. We talked last right. week about guys who, in a matter of three or four weeks in the season, all of a sudden became worth a first round draft pick. Right. Elijah McGuire is not there. But it would not surprise anybody. If it, it shouldn't surprise you if in three weeks you see Elijah McGuire get sold for a late first. Right. If he comes in here, obviously, you know, Crowell's in there taking the banger role, and this offense is not great. So, it, you know, it's maybe... It's take something to get it, those points to, yes. to make it look like he's... Yes. ...to the layman who's but not watching if you can it, give but. up, you know, if you can give up two third-round picks for him right now and give up a chance at who knows what right. for a guy who can catch the ball... Maybe a three and a four. If you can right. get into that neighborhood right now while somebody's sleeping on him. Would you give up a two? I wouldn't want to. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's you know, we talk, we, we joke around a lot in, on this show about how, you know, people say, hey, I got a, I got a 212. You know, I got a late right, two. Right. How do you really know? If you're eight and O oh, and there's no chance you're missing the playoffs and you're stacked and your team is probably going to have a 210, 211, 212 type draft pick, Mm -hmm. I would have no problem giving that up for Elijah McGuire tonight. Right. I'd give it away because who am I going to get at 210 that I probably don't drop anyway? And, you know, like the 210's tough. Right. 
You're actually at two ten. You're just hoping that somebody takes a couple of idiots in front of you, right? And you get Dallas Godert where you're where, right. where you're not supposed to, right? You know, I, in in one of our home leagues, I got I got Dallas Godert at three ten in in a league, Whew. and you're just like, what happened? How right. is that even possible? Right? And you know, so uh, that's, yeah, that's I, uh, yeah. I would give up a late two for McGuire right now, but I don't think I should have to. And if I did think I had to, I'd try to get a three back and right. you know just play that game. And sure. that's how, that's how we talk to our Patreon members each and every day about the trades we break down a trade and say okay we we get their roster we get their draft picks we see what's happening and we say okay hey you can get this trade done right now if you think he's shopping somebody we've had a couple people get dalvin cook this past week before he ripped off a 70 yard Mm, run on sunday right and we helped a couple we helped more than one person get dalvin cook on the cheap and they're super excited about it today i promise you that and we helped them do it absolutely i helped help myself get uh Delvin Cook. Yeah, you did. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd be down to give up the two if I absolutely had to and try and get that three back. To me, this dude looks the part on the field. He's got a deceptive first step when he plants that foot to make a cut. It's very fluid looking. There's no dancing. Everything he does is very decisive and quick. I like the zero to 60 burst. He seems like a tough dude. He was charged with breaking 20 tackles on 105 touches back in 2017. Yeah. So you, you see him run mean, and I lo- it's physical running, and then you throw on this PPR floor. Let's do it. That's what I'm saying. So like you, if you're if you're shooting for a playoff berth, or you're, or you're you know you're one of those teams where you're blowing people up with Gurley and Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill type teams, where you just crush your first pick and your second and third pick were awesome, but then you know you need an RB two. Why wouldn't you give up a two to get a guy who's going to give who has that PPR floor and will offer more of a ceiling maybe next year? You're not you're probably not going to get anywhere near that ceiling this year, but maybe next year as this team continues to grow and adds more pieces through the draft. And if you thought you were a struggling team and that's supposed to be an early two, I I, I wouldn't even try. Maybe you that's how you sell the the bu- person you're buying from and say, hey, I'm struggling, so it's going to be early three right. instead of even talking about the right. two. Instead of trying to trade away a late two on a championship roster, if you got a bad roster, you're going to say, hey, I'm a bad roster. This could be 3-1. Mm-hmm. And you can do some things with 3-1. Remember that guy that got so-and-so at 3-1? Cup, you know? I mean. Exactly. So you can do damage at 3-1 if you make a smart choice. You probably got a one out of four chance of getting somebody good. But that's why you want to trade him for Elijah McGuire. Right. I completely agree. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. We're going to go to break real quick, and we'll be back uh, with more Married to the Game for your pleasure. <laughs> you okay? We good? Ah, yeah. We good here? We're going to break. All righty then. <laughs> Welcome back. Hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty if you feel so inclined. We're gonna jump uh jump into some San Diego charges. They're not in San Diego anymore. Nope, they're not. San home. Diego. Change that to direct mailing address, there, buddy. A whale's vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Update. That's what that means. Update your mailing list. The the L.A. Clippers, that's who we're going to talk about right now. We're going to get into some Mike Williams, little Tyrell Williams, yep. the Williams brothers the from char- another mother. The Chargers forgotten men over there behind Keenan Allen and Melvin Gordon. The forgotten right. soldiers. So uh, who you want to go first here? Should we give Tyrell his due? Let's give Tyrell the nod. He's a veteran. The veteran. He's a veteran. Seems to be really be coming into his own, right? Well, he was already in his own. He's he had his own. He had his time. Two years ago, Keenan Allen got hurt. Tyra Williams was a thing. You could start him every week. Had 1,000 yards, eight, seven or eight touchdowns. He was crushing. 69 receptions. He was a gazelle. You hit him on a small crossing route. He could take it forever. You could throw it deep. He was fast as hell. Like, that was Tyrell Williams. Right. And then, last year, Keenan Allen comes back, and Tyra Williams struggles. Doesn't get the targets that he did the year before. Has a couple of really meager efforts to catch some long balls that were there. The ball was in the right spot. He had some position there. You He's know. never been the contested catcher. Yeah. Well, like we, you know, we talk about 50, 50 balls and there was times there's 50, 50 balls. That is the thing. That's a, that's a real thing. And, but sometimes the ball's in the position and there's body, but there's a position that the, the pass is there and it's more like an 80, 20, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just like it's not really the fifty fifty anymore. Like he should catch that. He's there. All he's got to do is jump up and grab it and put his hands on it. And there was a couple times there last year where he looked. He didn't play as. I mean, he's six four, right. but you know, two oh five soaking wet. Right. So he's slender. 
Very. And so he's not exact. He's playing lighter than that, even you right. know, playing playing. He plays smaller than he. He's almost like a Deshaun Jackson out there, and playing a, in like a, a beanpole, big body, and tall, tall Deshaun Jackson, exactly. Right. And you won't know. go up for the ball, but but that's kind of changing this year. You've seen him he's, go up and make some incredible catches. That that touchdown versus Cleveland when he had three defenders on him, right? That was more like a twenty. That, that was more like a twenty eighty. That was a twenty eighty ball, <laughs> and he took that. And it should have been an interception, but he just wrestled it away from that guy. Yeah. And I don't know if he's just been working on his hands. They seem pretty strong, like, on the – he's kind of a one-trick pony in the past with that one trick being pretty awesome. It's a good trick. Getting open deep downfield. Well, like, it's, he's got that shallow cross. You mentioned the shallow because cross. Because when he catches the ball, he does run like a gazelle. So it's really – if you, you can watch the highlight tape on this guy. When he catches the ball, it's not that he breaks tackles. It's that – he breaks contact. Like there's mm-hmm. no people don't really get their hands on him when he starts striding and running across the field with the ball in his hands. A lot of times people can't get their hands on him for you know forever. It feels like so it's not like he's out there breaking tackles. He's just making guys miss and he's running around people. And so yeah, he he was more like a trick and a half. Mm-hmm. You know, trick and a half pony. Sure. I'll, okay, I'll concede. Okay, trick and a half. One point five tricks. But I think he's up that. I think he's got a couple more tricks in his bag. You see him coming back to the ball. You see you see that 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 uh, cor- uh, is it a comeback route working well in his favor, which should if you got that kind of speed. Exactly. It should be the easiest route you can run. The back shoulder fade. The the touchdown that he had in this past game where he it was just perfect timing and the footwork to stay in bounds and to contort his body back and go low. He had he had to fight off the defender and, and wax off that hand to get even free to make the catch. It was a great catch. And that, that great throw that's and not catch. something he's going to have in his arsenal his second year in the league after catch, getting seven targets as a rookie with Phillip Rivers. When Keenan Allen goes down, Tyler Tyrell Williams was no name. We didn't know who he was, and all of a sudden he was awesome. Two years later, he's got some back shoulder fade coming in his game, and that's good. You want to see a young man working on his craft, and especially spending more time. They they We made a big deal in the offseason about how underrated he was and the fact that the Chargers signed him or put that second-round tender on right. him. So the Chargers showed you that they liked this guy a lot to say – you know, this we're going to put that second round tender on him. That you don't just do that for for just you know somebody that you don't have a lot of faith in, right? And not to mention Keenan Allen's injury history. They're like, we need to keep some depth around here. A la, we drafted Mike Williams with the seventh pick overall two years ago. You know, year Absolutely. before last. So uh, yeah, I mean, he's coming around. He's growing up. He's grow maybe growing into that six four frame. Learning from some mistakes. Had some some weak attempts at catching the ball a couple times last year in some big spots maybe even a couple i remember at least a handful of drops where it was a bigger play that could have been whether or not there was a guy there to call it a contested catch or not it should have been caught Mm -hmm. and those are types of things that just makes you when you're playing dynasty football and casey and i had tyra williams on a bunch of our rosters last year and when you're playing dynasty football and you see this happening on limited attempts, by the way, because this is a down target year because Keenan Allen was healthy. Keenan Allen was just murdering ca- catches, Merkin. just getting all the, the targets in the world last year, especially second half of the season. And when you get the attempt, when you get the target and you're dropping it and, you know, especially if you catch it, all you got to do is catch it. And you're just like 50 yards and a touchdown. Come on, man. You know, right. so like it's the confidence dropper. You know, he's dropping the ball and I'm dropping my confidence in him right. over here. So and I think that's I think we saw that play out in the Dynasty community this year. He obviously came in um, you know, as a very underrated wide receiver, but under underappreciated No push. respect. No respect. And this year, last month Find out what it means to me. Got to get that R E S P C T clocking in at a lower 187th 187th pick in DLF mock drafts for October. And of course that was October, early October before he got on his heater where he's got four touchdowns in the last 3 weeks and he's heating up with the Chargers and I I it's, I think obviously you got to catch the ball to make these plays, but the Chargers themselves have gotten hot. They're heating up. Philip Rivers' confidence is never down in himself, mm-hmm. but the whole team's playing good right now. Obviously, the first couple weeks of the season, everything went through the running backs and Keenan Allen. And, I mean, Austin Eckler and Melvin Gordon were just setting the league on fire. Last couple weeks, you've seen Austin Eckler come back to earth a little bit. Melvin Gordon's still a beast. He didn't mm. miss a game. But it's went through some of these wide receivers and, and, and Tyrell Williams being one of them. Right. 
So, I mean, you uh, you got to appreciate if he's on your bench and you've held on to him, you got to appreciate what he's been doing for you the last month. There's no doubt about it. Absolutely. That. Four touchdowns in the last three games, five on the year, only 29 targets, 22 receptions, 451 yards. It's a lot of yards on that little bit of catches. Oh, his catch rate, his ca- his average yards per catch is all like it was 17. Crushes too. the A dot. He kills the A dot. <laughs> <laughs> and and he kills the yak too right. on a limited. He's not his yak, 118 yards after the catch this year, but on limited catches. That's on what 22. I was about. His his yak total numbers will never be Golden Tate because he doesn't get the targets. Right. But when he does catch something low across the middle, or you know maybe he started out far right, far on the right hand side and doesn't catch it till he crosses the left hash because Philip Rivers is patient and he'll let him clear all the way across and clear those zones out. And then maybe the, the two guys on the left hand sides cleared him out, and they he hits Tyrell Williams, and Ty, and then he's off in the races. So he's not going to get the quantity of targets to add up yak totals, but his average yak per catch is real solid. Right. The thing I think that's most intriguing about Tyrell is that he's going to be a free agent next year. Now you can look at that both ways, leaving Phil Philip Rivers in Correct. this predominant offense. Could look to be looked at not necessarily as a plus, but it is a little crowded. There's a lot of options for Philip Rivers. Melvin Gordon is awesome in the passing game. Keenan is a target hog. Mike Williams, a seventh overall pick, coming into his own this year. Right, um, and then there's a tight end that everybody loves that might be able to get on the field one day, which is crazy. Yeah, that it's going to be pretty soon. I think that he's coming back from this ACL. It's ridiculous. Well, they never put him on but, IR. So I know it's he, ridiculous. There, he could return for the playoffs. Crazy, which would be kind of dumb for the Chargers. But the Chargers been haven't had this you know playoff window since before LT right. Ladanian Thomason retired. Right, and so I I would it wouldn't surprise me at all if they rush this tight end back if they, if they right. make the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, it looks like that's what they're going to do. That seems like it's been the plan. So Tyrell is is going to be a free agent next year, and then he's going to be probably a fairly sought after commodity with the with the way he's playing this year and the skill set that he has. I could see him getting paid, and I could see you getting a boost in value, no doubt, from this guy if you have him and you hold him. Right? He's been on a heater the last four games. There's there's a uh, sandwiched in between two ten point games as a twenty one and a twenty seven point game, so he's on a heater. Uh, I don't. I guess the time to to buy him is kind of it's not really past. He's probably you probably can still acquire him. Obviously not as cheap as you once could have. Well, definitely not as cheap as you could have got him last month, no doubt. But uh, you know somebody like me who's had Tyra Williams in the on a short bench league, you've seen uh, in the FFPC leagues that Casey and I are in, he was in the roster, he was in the draft in a handful of leagues last year because he didn't make the 16 cut. He didn't make the 16 round cut. Right. Uh, 16 guys on your team. Um but so but in the last 4 weeks in this heater that he's been on, um that he hadn't had more than 4 targets. He's just doing work with those targets, you know, like last week. I mean, obviously, they go into Seattle, they get an early lead, and they just try to ride it out. They do get the victory. So it's not like the, you know, even Phillip Rivers was just throwing the ball all over the place. But the Chargers had a very, very solid win in Seattle. Any win in Seattle is good, but the Chargers handled that game. They were up by two scores fairly early. And, but I mean, three targets, two catches, 23 and a touch. But even the week before that, you know, or two weeks ago, because they were on the bye. Four targets, four catches, 118 and a touch. And the week before that, um, four targets, three catches, 118 and two. Like like you said, that's what Tyrell Williams does. He gets deep. He makes points on one play. And when he makes two plays, he's got 30 for you. Mm-hmm. You know, But he's not doing all this work on six, seven, eight targets. He's he's only had one game in the year where he's even had five. and But it's been a consistent three targets, four targets, four targets, three targets, five, three, 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 three you know, five. It's been and, – and actually, Mike Williams' targets are the exact same way, three, four, three, three, four, three. So, I mean, the way they're using them is very consistent. It's just sometimes those deep balls hook up, and sometimes most of the time they don't. Excuse me, but when they do, magic happens. So, you know, if, if he can go to a spot where either A, he gets signed in free agency to somebody who's going to give him six or seven targets a game to let him double his chances of getting that 12-point play, or something crazy happens and the Chargers actually keep him, but Keenan Allen's not going anywhere and Mike Williams isn't going anywhere. So if he stays with the Chargers, which is unlikely because he is going to be, you know, demanding a decent contract, then... He's, it's just, it, 
it's so funny how it works with wide receivers. You got to get targets to score points, you know. And obviously Tyrell Williams is doing some crazy, crazy point scoring on minimal targets, but which is impressive and very a discouraging impressive. at the same time. That he's right not when you're averaging work. twenty nine and thirty twenty twenty nine yards a catch and thirty yards a catch and thirty nine yards a catch, like why wouldn't you throw me some more balls? But that's just not – they got, like you it's said – a lot of mouths to feed. They got weapons. Not just – they got solid weapons over there, and they're clicking this year, and it's, you know, Chargers – they're on a six-game, five-game winning streak, and things are looking great for the Chargers, and that doesn't mean that, that, that Tyra Williams gets any more targets because of it. So would you be trying to acquire this guy? I mean, like uh, a month ago it would have been a lot cheaper, but I think right now – it's still going to be pretty cheap because he's still going to be disrespected. You can. There's probably going to be plenty of guys who have had him, and he's probably got tossed around as a, a cut candidate the first half of the season. So if all of a sudden you were at a guy that you were going to cut, you could get something for him. You're more likely to take it. Now there might be if you if you're one of those teams that are just struggling at wide receiver, and all of a sudden Tyrell Williams has been a starter for you for a you know don't lie to yourself don't li- don't lie and say you had Tyrell Williams in your lineup unless it, when he scored thirty points a couple weeks ago in London I think it was against Cleveland when he went four for hundred and twenty and two touchdowns like don't be don't be fibbing that was on your bench you probably weren't starting unless him. you had a bunch of injuries and bunch of questionable people you probably didn't start tyrell williams when he went off for 30 but maybe you plugged him in the next week and he got you four for 120 and a touch and you're super excited about it maybe not maybe he did it on your bench again and you're grinding your teeth so i don't mind buying him right now because i think he can still go he's got plenty of room to go up because i don't think i don't think he's done enough for long enough to you know warrant is it too is it too too much i mean that's i've so that's an aggressive offer, I think. Um, I don't think him. it's I don't think it's too much. I hate to keep going back to the well, but if you're, you know, one of the if you're the favorite to win the championship and you got two ten, that's when you ask yourself two ten two eleven two twelve. If I had my rookie draft today, would I take Tyra Williams with two ten two eleven? Probably not two twelve. He's probably know? not there. So that's the thing about you know obviously. When you're trading draft picks mid season, it doesn't say what draft pick it is. It just says second round pick. Right. You know? So if you are if you're one of those teams that if you have one of those leagues where you play for the number one draft pick for the people that don't make the playoffs and you're on that fringe, I wouldn't want to give up a chance that you know, if you're on the if you're if you don't make the playoffs but you have a good enough team to go win the one one, therefore you get the two one. I wouldn't be itching to give away my 2-1 for Tyrell Williams because all it takes is two games without a touchdown and you could get him for a three. Right. That's the point. Right. You know, if you're you're probably not going to look for Tyrell Williams to plug him into your lineup anyway. Like you're saying, you're probably playing him for next year, kind of like Elijah McGuire, but different because he's not a running back. And there's wide receivers everywhere, a la Tyrell. Tyrell Williams pops up and he's a starter right now. But all it takes is two more games where he gets three targets, one catch for 10 yards. So would you sell him for a two? I wouldn't mind it. I would sell him for that guy who is, you know, that early two-ish guy, I'd be happy to. Yeah. Now, again, I this is one of those places where if you got Tyrell Williams on your team, you probably have a bigger bench league or either you have a smaller bench league and you just picked him up off of waivers last two weeks ago when he started doing work or you – were in love with him from two years ago and you're just a holder Mm -hmm. like a Jay Wayne. Mm -hmm. Jay Wayne ain't trying to move nobody. He's got people (laughs) growing beards on their bench. But, you know, like... Keenan Allen has a beard. Growing gray beards. You know, you got people gray and balding, going bald on the bench. Like, that's you're a holder. And there's nothing... Hey, I just sold Tyrell Williams. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. I sold him. uh, There was a... I'm in a group chat in one of our leagues and I rarely pay attention to it because it's on Twitter and I, I really hate Twitter. It's just... Sucks. Hit me up at Jay Wayne's World. <laughs> uh, it's it's just so disheartening to scroll through Twitter and listen and read what everybody says and thinks they know. It was just it's worse. Than I love. This, I'm there for the stats. It was worse than Roto World. I'm there for the stats. Uh, and I see in this chat. I just happened to see it come through a little message that I hadn't muted that day, and it said, "I'm looking. I got running backs for sale." And I was like, what kind of an idiot has running backs for sale? I'm going to go <laughs> check this out, right? And so he had some solid uh, – first went after Philip Lindsay, didn't want to part with him. 
So then I was like, all right, well, let me get Alex Collins. And he wanted Tyler Lockett. And I was like, what about Tyrell? He's like, I like Tyrell. And we ended up getting a deal done. I sent him Tyrell in a 19 second for Alex Collins in a 2023rd. Okay. And I That's, probably would have done it without getting the third back. But I was like, oh, I'm going to be big Kobe. Kobe's going to be mad at me if I don't try, at least try to get the next round pick back. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm taking it on the chin around here in the local leagues with Jay Wayne and Casey Bo. Casey's he 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 holds his own, but both of you guys are not huge traders. But I'm open book to you guys, and that's a good trade. It is, and I, I mean, uh, so I took a we, guy we, who's yeah, a little we, high right we now spent, and went and got a running back. We spent, I, I would we spent weeks doing that. we spent weeks talking about buying Alex Collins low, mm-hmm. and I think you did that. There's no doubt in my mind you did that. I know you paid a lot less for Tyrell Williams than he paid for Alex Collins. Right. So that was a great pickup for you. Um, and it, but it's interesting while we're on the Tyrell Williams is that you chose to give away Tyrell Williams over Tyler Lockett. Care right. to explain the logic there? I don't know. I The cult following of Tyler Lockett? I feel like he gets more respect and that okay. if I was going to move Tyler Lockett I could probably get more for him than Tyrell. All right. Uh, I also feel like he's been more consistent this year. Oh, no doubt about it. He had a touchdown like every game for a while. Yeah. So he's been a staple in my lineup in that league. This is a 16-team league, so it's a very big league. Right. And uh, I'm I'm okay at running back right now. I got uh, got Christian McCaffrey and Duke Johnson and Lamar Miller. We'll talk about Duke later, but you didn't. Duke Johnson wasn't Duke Johnson before last week, so don't pretend like that was somebody you were leaning on. I mean, I've been playing. I mean, it's it's a (laughs) sixteen team league, man. It's hard out there. Fair enough. It's hard out there. All right, wait, wait, pause, pause. Did you? Would you have if you you're in you know engaged in some big co trade tactics? Uh But let's be honest, since the (laughs) trade's already gone down, Mm -hmm. would you have given him Tyler Lockett for Alex Collins if you had to? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough, but he wanted a two, two though, and I was like, "Come on, man!" Right, but you know, you're you're calling his bluff and and moving right, around and seeing right. what you can do, and I I don't know, I don't know what maybe want to keep Tyler over Tyrell. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like Tyrell. Been on Tyrell for a while. Liked him. There's just something about having a guy in your lineup scoring points for a couple weeks, and it gives you confidence. And it, that this was what two weeks ago. This was. I let's see the Ravens were on. It was yeah, it happened before last week. Okay, because so I've had Alex Collins for one week. Okay, all right, um, and I actually plugged him in over Duke, right? And who knew Duke crushed? It. Who knew? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Took point that trade got you negative negative right. points, negative twenty. Right, right. So Alex Collins still got me his twelve or thirteen or whatever he's been doing all year long, and yeah. I won this week. Nice. Uh, and then this week it's a super flex league, so this week I got. Uh, Jared Goff on a buy, and so I got to plug in an extra player. Now you can plug in Alex and Duke. Right. There you go. So, okay, fair enough. I just wanted to ask you about the Tyrell Williams versus yeah. Tyler Lockett. It's interesting. I'm not sure why I was like, no, on I Tyler can't Lockett. do Ty- Tyler, but let me do Tyrell. I don't know. I don't yes. know what that was. People have personal connections to players, man. And I can't even really explain it. I like them both. Uh, I just, I guess, I feel more comfortable having Tyler Lockett. The Tyler, the Tyler Williams, uh, Tyrell Williams lows were low, and he wasn't hurt. You make the excuse for Tyler Lockett when he's hurt, right? Well, I mean, it is a built-in excuse. You cannot sure. catch balls if your knee is torn, right? It is a proven fact. And so, if you're on the IR because your knee blew off, you and can't Ty- catch balls. Tyler's younger than Tyrell. Tyrell's an old player ish. He's he's 26 and a half. Fair enough. Good point. Tyler Tyler's a little younger. Tyler is is just got paid and is going to be wrapped up with Russell Wilson for the True. next foreseeable future. I don't know what's going to happen with Tyrell. Right. And we, and let's be honest, we all knew who Tyler Lockett was going into the draft. Right. And going into the NFL draft. Thank you. Reception. And we were loving perception. him coming out of Kansas State. And. Nobody knew who Tyrell Williams was. Right. So you get you start higher and you do a little something and you start lower and you do a little something. You're not necessarily at the same place in our hearts. Do a Fair little enough. dance. Make do a little, a little dance. Make a little love. <laughs> so there you go, Tyrell Williams. I mean, I got no problem with you buying right now because it's a little blip on the radar. It's obviously more than you would have paid last month, but I wouldn't go overpaying based on the fact that he is completely not confident start to me. Right. Like we Casey and I plugged him in in the league this year this week because we needed to and it paid off. Right. And you know, got Tyler Boyd on a bye and plug in Tyra Williams and you get your touchdown. Right. But, you know, next again, next week he gets another three targets and he might hit you with that, you know, three for twenty two like he did in week three. 
Right. And you got five it's, points. It's volatile. Very volatile. And right now it's on the up. Right now it's hot. There's so many things that you could do with Tyrell that I would be comfortable with, whether that's buy, sell, hold. Right. You right. know, you could package this guy up with a pick and go improve your player. Yeah. You know, that's something you love to do. Yeah. If you wanted, you know, I, I saw a guy who wanted a running back and he ne- or he, he wanted a wide receiver to score points. He's his team was struggling with wide receivers, which is a rarity. Right. And a guy that's down to like I have a team that's struggling with with wide receivers. Of course, I did just get Keenan Allen off some late night trade that I didn't even remember sending oh, out. I don't even want to talk about that right now. Traded Deion Lewis in a second. Today, I ended up with Keenan Allen. I cannot that. believe that you just got Keenan Allen in that league for Deion Lewis in the two. Pretty it's only a 12-man league. There's no excuses. I mean, if it was a 32-man league and you didn't have a wide receiver to a running back to start, I guess. But you don't go. Right. That's That was a redraft trade. I don't yeah. want to get too far off of Tyrell Williams, but let, you brought it up. I did. I, I tried to push. push yeah. I tried to kick the can down the road right. on this trade, but why? Right. let me tell you what we'd be telling our Patreon members to not accept that offer to not do that yeah like when pe- we got plenty of things we don't just go pat people on the butt all the time on patreon and say yeah take that trade a lot right. of trades come off our desk and we say absolutely don't do not it. don't do and it then we go into re- reasons why and, and sometimes we're like immediately accept it don't play any games they might be shopping that that trade's too good to, to play and try to get a third rounder back or mm-hmm. anything like that and this guy you sent out Dion lewis in a two last week after he has a 20 point game it was and, last, and then he had another twenty point game. This and week. that's why I accepted it. Yep. If you need a running back, you do not take Keenan Allen and right. go get Deion Lewis in a second round pick for Keenan Allen. That right. is not how you play this. I love running backs, and I dismiss some wide receivers in my day. That's how I play this mm-hmm. game because I can drum up the wide receivers. But you do not go <laughs> down from <laughs> Keenan Allen to a two game heater Deion Lewis. And yeah, don't get me wrong. Obviously, coming out of the bye week, the Titans said, "Hey." Two weeks ago, Deion Lewis was our. They've pretty much gotten their their Derrick Henry's not even a thing right now. And if you and, look at the snap share, it's it's half. And but the touch share is not even close. And, and Deion the, Lewis. Would, no, I mean like Derrick Henry's getting half the snaps as Deion Lewis. Yeah, but Deion the touch is going up and the but touches, Deion's right. getting ca- Deion's getting carries. Well, it, it's and like, he's getting catches. It's similar to a Tyreek uh, or Tariq Cohen situation where that uh, offense just runs better with Deion Lewis in it. Couldn't couldn't agree more because he can run it between the tackles and he's he's great. But in the Jordan Howard game. is a way better running back than Derrick Henry. So sure. anyway, you don't go from Keenan Allen to Derrick to, to uh, Deion Lewis in the two. I don't care if Deion Lewis has a couple of good games in a row. You don't do that. That was a great trade for you. Samaje so Toise on the up, and that, that's a good offer to send out to get the conversation started. Right, and he's and you had no. You had zero confidence he was going to accept that trade offer. No, nah, I forgot about it. Right. I didn't even remember sending it. And then it. it happened. And then a week later, because of the deadline, it stays up for seven days. Okay. And I didn't take it down. And today you came in and you were like, you got Keenan Allen in the, in one of the home leagues? And oh, I was like, I do? Really upset. So you're Samaje Toi, right? I was like, yeah. Yeah. I got Keenan. All right. Not happy about it. Awesome. All right, well, that'll wrap up uh, Keenan, Dion, and Tyrell. <laughs> Alex Collins got Alex in there Collins somehow. somehow. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and take a quick break, and we'll be back with the other Williams brother, Mike Dub. For your pleasure. Another crack. A swift crack went his whooped tail. Wow. It's been a long time since I put that uh, Tenacious D soundbite in here. I think I even got rid of it because I just I did it too many times. What's a whooped tail? I don't know. He's talking. It's 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 the song about the best song in the world, but the song that they sing doesn't actually sound anything like the song that they originally sang, <laughs> because the devil or something like countered them on their long journey and made them play the best song in the world, or he was going to eat their souls. And they didn't do well with that. No, they did. They nailed it. Oh, they played the first thing that came to our head. It just so happened to be it was the best song in the world. <laughs> And uh, fair enough, and uh, and then and then like they so they played for the demon, and then and the demon so was the like sound <laughs> bite was born. He was like, <laughs> "Be you angels?" And they were like, "No, we are but men." Rock on, and and there was something about a swift crack went his whoop a tail, the, oh, the like beast, a, and they uh, like they killed the beast with the best song in the world. Gotcha. You should go check it out, Tenacious D. It's definitely definitely worth <laughs> ten years ago reference, but it works. Oh yeah. I was gonna do. I was gonna sing that song for karaoke when we were my wife and I were on uh, our little trip when I was uh, injured with uh, 
the wife wants to go on a trip. Um, you called that being injured? You were out for a week? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, story time with Jay Wayne. Coming she right she up. wanted me to do karaoke, and I was like, well, this is the only song I'm singing because I'm the worst singer ever. I'm not going to go up there <laughs> and, and sing just a hurt real, everyone's ears. For, sing a real song. By singing. I'm so, the worst singer. I try not to do it on this podcast because I, I. So, you rock, you're going to go rock a so Jack, I was gonna Jack try Black comedy <laughs> special. But they didn't have it. Why and would I was like, they? Well, I'm not doing it. Right. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to put everybody through this for selfish reasons. So then you're looking at the DJ like you take your karaoke way too seriously if you don't have a Jack Jack Black playlist. Right. Okay. Yeah, we were deep in Seattle territory. Mm -hmm. They weren't weren't digging the Jack Black. Gotcha. All right. Well, we're about to talk about uh, one of my favorite players. Mr. Mike Williams. Mike Dub, and not just because he's a Clemson guy, and I'm a Clemson alum, and, and, and not just because Matt Kelly hates him, although that's a nice bonus. Nice. Uh, but just because he's so big and awesome. He is big and awesome. And uh, I feel like you got to go get him, because he's only going to get more and more expensive as the season goes on and his career goes on. Would you disagree? I don't, I don't disagree at all. Obviously, he had um, a bummer for a rookie year. Bummer, had, slipped disc happens. You know, <laughs> the hate it when the slip disc comes around. So he he had he had the slip disc, and everybody's scared his value plummets. Right? Matt Kelly said that he was so upset that people were going to be able to cop out on saying that Mike Williams wasn't good because he got injured. He wanted him to be healthy so that he could play bad and he could tell you how bad he could be like, I told you so. Right. I told you this guy was going to be so bad. Look at his metrics. Right, right, right. Because he's Fuck big big and awesome, so he can't be good at football. Right. Um. The You know, right now, no doubt about it, his value is going to continue to climb. As we talked about uh, Tyra Williams coming in at 187 in DLF, and, and it's just, you know, as bad as everything was last year with Mike Williams, he had a couple of flat, made some really sick looking touchdown grabs at the beginning of this season. And, you know, already at 54, which is the middle of the fifth round. Um, last pick in the fourth round is 48. So fifth 54 is literally dead in the middle of the fifth round is Mike Williams for the chargers on a limited resume, but long for spectacular plays already. And it's incredible. It is incredible. And the, I mean, he's it's what just, he did all throughout college. It's not new news. Just if, balls gone up there and you're thinking, how in the hell did he come down with that? Right. How did he make that catch? Exactly. And there's, so yes, he's, he's got five touchdowns on the season already. Boom. And on 32 targets, which right. is ridiculous rate already. And averaging 18 yards a catch, putting together some big plays, long cut touchdowns and shorter touchdowns where he's a, a huge ass man doing what he does. He's and a mammoth. So there's no doubt about it that his value is going up. And he's the kind of guy that you need to have involved in a trade where it doesn't look like he's your number one target in the trade. And, you know, you're trying to water it down and pretending like Mike Williams is the throw in. If you come firing off from Mike Williams, then you might have somebody. You're going to get the radar alert, mm-hmm. and your people's hair, you know, the hair on the back. Hey, are, who's this Rex Burkhead guy? Right, right. <laughs> the, the, inside joke for for our old listeners. Right, there. right. If so the hair on the back of their neck's going to stand up and mm-hmm. be like, "You're trying to take Mike Williams from me. Something's up." Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's you know, if you actually watch the games, you have seen Mike Williams play really good football. He just looks so big out there, like just standing there in his stance. He's he's huge. 6'4", 218. This guy is, is faster in pads than his 40 times showed. No doubt. Uh, it's just the ball tracking is amazing. And it's just he has that last second pull away from the defender towards the ball. Like you watch these big long plays where Phil's just unleashing a ma- massive throw downfield. And Mike Williams, who didn't run a fast 40, that was a big knock on him. He didn't even run it the combine because he didn't want to hurt his stock too, too much, which... Good, good job. He got drafted seventh overall. It yeah, it worked. The plan worked. Nobody cared that he didn't run. The, the Chargers didn't care that he didn't run a 40 at the combine. Mm-hmm. And so he's downfield, and it's like the defender's on him, and then just at the last second, he just pulls away. Yeah. And that's that's one aspect of his game that's awesome is that ball tracking, last second separation. But say the ball's not away from the defender and it's just up in the air and it's one of those 50 50 balls or 20 80 balls yeah he's coming down with that he catches the 20 80s those hands are so strong the mittens man yeah. just so big and strong he's so big and strong like he can't run 
you know, remember you playing NBA Jam? You run around holding mm-hmm. the turbo button too long. Mm-hmm. Now you guys wore out. Mm-hmm. You know, like Mike Williams can't run down the field on turbo button. Right. But when that ball's in the air, there he hits turbo button. Right. And you know, and he's juiced up, and then he's and he can doing stack what a he defender, does. and his body is a separation. He's like Kelvin Benjamin, but not fat. You know, this is. Yeah, he's like a better, I, I he's like a there. souped up Kelvin Benjamin. I can get there. I can get there. He's he's leaner than Kelvin Benjamin, and he's meaner than Kelvin Benjamin's ever played. Just incredible eye popping catches. There's no doubt he's a playmaker. The nasty back shoulder fades, like that was just special to him and Deshaun Watson in college. Just, just you couldn't defend a back shoulder throw from Deshaun to. To Mike Williams, it's incredible, and then I think he's underrated after the catch. He hasn't gotten a ton of opportunity this far, but he crushed it in college. And it, these, it, he just hasn't had a ton of volume, right? We mentioned it before. The, the receiver's biggest foe is res- targets, right? It's super hard to catch the ball if it's not thrown to right. you, right? Like I, it's it's pretty much Chinese riddle on how you rack up receptions without targets. Right. I still hadn't figured it out yet. And that's not the role he's playing on this team, right? That's Keenan Allen working the short and intermediate. Exactly. And, and the Tyrell. Chargers. And you can, and, and short crossings. I said this after three or four weeks in the season about Miami Dolphins when we were mad about Kenyon Drake. They were winning, so you couldn't argue with it. Whatever. Right. You got the W. Right. The Chargers have Which won. Somehow they still are. Right. Yeah. Still got a dub. What have beat the Jets? The Chargers are winning five games in a row. And Mike Williams' catch totals goes one, three, one, one, one. And, you know, that's and one of them was 50 yards for a touchdown. The next game, last week it was, this week it was one for 30 and a touch. The week before it was one for 55 and a touch. Just ridiculous. Those are plays that win games for the team. Right. That's why he was drafted seventh overall. They don't care about our fantasy team. Mm-mm. Four targets, one catch against Cleveland when Tyrell Williams was blowing up with 30 points. You know, like he's got... 18 excuse me he got 18 catches in nine games like he's the catch the volume is not there but the plays and the touchdowns the fantasy points that are coming out per target per touch per catch are ridiculous out of mike williams right now and we just talked about tyra williams you know given the high draft tender and restricted free agency this year and if he leaves the chargers next year you're only going to hear more mike williams right and again out of a a bummer of a freshman year, uh, you know, rookie season. He had one good game when they blew out the Buffalo Bills where he had, you know, eight targets or eight catches or something like that. But everything else was similar usage to this year, but a lot less efficiency, a lot less production, a lot less big, did no touchdowns last year. And clicking this year with Phillip Rivers with the touchdowns. And I think there's obviously anybody can get hurt. You've had the back issue with Mike Williams, and that's always going to be in the back of your mind to be scary. But that was his junior year, and then he came back and played a full season with Clemson, and we won the national championship, and he balled out of control and got drafted seventh overall. Absolutely, and then blew a disc out. And then slipped a disc. (laughs) Just a slip? Not make it sound like Just the tip? Maybe it's a similar definition, but blowout sounds worse than a slip. No doubt. Oh, (laughs) completely opposite, yeah. A slip disc and a blown out disc are two different things. I, I think. imagine it sounds worse. I've never had a blown out disc, but <laughs> or slipped. I had a, I had a little. Tweak. I've never had. A I had slip. a disc tweak. Yeah, I had. I had. A, I did tweak something <laughs> in playing basketball one year, and I had to have my buddy. My buddy drove me to like my mom worked at the mall, so after practice, he would drive me to to meet with my mom, and like every single bump in the ground, like every move that we made, it was just a sharp. You were in trouble. Terrible pain. You were in trouble. Well, so it slip, only lasted like a day though. Slip so. disc way better than a than a blown out disc. Right. We have perhaps medical knowledge to back <laughs> this up. <laughs> My wife's a physical therapist, so you right. know. we should probably check on this. I know some stuff. We're definitely not going to get back to you about it though. So <laughs> there's no chance that Mike Williams value it and going up if he doesn't get hurt. Let's just go ahead and circle the wagons on that. Even if you know, even if Tyrell Williams stays, which he's not. They Probably got other. They, they got multiple backs, and that was you know the first couple games in the char- for the Chargers this year. Again, like we said with Tyra Williams, they're on the same team. It applies. The running backs were catching everything, and then you got Keenan Allen, and you know Mike Williams is having a semi breakout year on very limited targets. Very, he's got thirty one targets, which is two more than Tyrell. Yeah, 18. you add up Tyrell and and Mike Williams, you still don't get the Keenan Allen targets. You That's put right. those two guys together, you don't have Keenan Allen targets or receptions. But you do have 10 times as many touchdowns. Good point. Because uh, Keenan only has one, whereas Mike 
and Tyrell both have five apiece. Um, Mike Williams has played, let's see, 80, 88 snaps less than Tyrell. Yeah. So Tyrell and Keenan are out there for the majority, and then and then Mike Dubs is bringing up the rear. Well, that's interesting. And let me jump in there and cut you off sure. because they have very they have about the same targets. Mike and Tyrell Williams. Twenty nine for Tyrell, thirty one for Mike. And Mike's playing. If you got eighty get eighty snaps difference, what's that? Ten a week in eight games ish. Yeah. So he's he's playing a, a fair twenty fifteen percent less in the game. Had a, you know, 60-ish snaps per game or whatever. So he's on the field 10 to 20, 15% less than Tyra Williams, getting the same amount of targets and the same touchdowns and the same type of catch. They mirror image average per catch. Um, you know, so, and like you said, he's not getting a lot of opportunities to show you the fact that he can break tackles. He's going to break those tackles in the opposite way than Tyrell. Like I said, Tyrell's not really breaking tackles. He's just avoiding contact altogether. Mm -hmm. Mike Williams is going to blow your arm off. Right. You better bring something more than just your right arm trying to trip this man up. Right. He will separate your shoulder to get by you. You go back and ask Carolina Gamecocks his senior year mm. when he carried three of them over the goal line. Right. Because the first one thought he was tackling him, and the second one was like, we got this guy, and the third one was like, this is going to be fun. Right. And then all of a sudden, they get thrown off in the end zone, and he's still standing. Right. And it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. <laughs> that was awesome. I was at that game. Speaking of ridiculous, Sorry. Clemson tangent here as a Gamecock. Yeah. I couldn't be more jealous of Dabo Sweeney. And yeah. Charles coach. Yeah. This, and you might have more information on this, but apparently he's trying to get every senior a, a touchdown this year. Mm. And two year, two weeks ago, he had every single player that dressed got in the game. 94 players, I think. All got in the game. Yeah. The brotherhood and the momentum and the just atmosphere around that program right now. I was talking about it with my parents on Sunday because we're all big Gamecocks. And mm. I was like, just get used to getting your teeth kicked in mm. because. This thing ain't stopping anytime soon. Yeah. The only thing we can hope for is that Saban retires and Dabo goes back to Bama because that's mm. where he played college ball. And that's right. what me and my dad are working on. Me and my dad are always working on <laughs> the next theory, the next conspiracy to why Carolina's going to win the division uh -huh. and how we're going to go 10 and 2 and how Clemson's about to get bad. We're always working on those conspiracies. <laughs> and we had our run. It's the, it's the Carolina you know, struggle. We had our run. Yep. So Spurrier came in there and took us to a couple, three or four 11 win seasons. We were ranked top five for a while. I we beat, beat Clemson we four beat, years we, in a row. We beat y'all five years in a row, five. I think. And we had our run, but y'all got Dabo, mm -hmm. and we don't. And I don't get me wrong, Must Champ's a fighter. He's the kind of coach that you want in your back in the back alley with you when you get caught up in a bad situation. Must Champ looks like he'll tear your head off, <laughs> but. Dabo Sweeney. That was going to fizzle that argument out. He's, and we're he, all, he's not gonna, only that, he's going to get the other guy's wallet. Right. And, and it's they're going to hand it they're over. They're going to be happy to give it to right. him. <laughs> he, he, there will be no jaw breaking right. in the back alley with Dabo because right. he's going to talk him into coming and visiting the campus. Right. They're going to rub the rock right. and run down the hill <laughs> and wear purple and orange. And Drink it's going to be just baby. the ugliest color combination you've ever seen in your life. I uh, watch but, it. But. They're going to win ball games, Orange and they're going to favorite color kill you seventy something to six or whatever. Ask Louisville how it feels to play Clemson. Well, and that's not even us, man. We're not a seventy-seven point run the score up on you. But if our third stringers are breaking off touchdown runs, what, what are you supposed to you do? You got to run. You got to play it to what the end of the game. Just don't don't score. No, come yeah. on, man. You, you got to play. Yeah. So anyway, to get to 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 transfer back to Mike Williams from the Clint, I just had to say that like mm. the what Dabo. Lovely. What Dabo's got going on in Clemson right now is absolutely ridiculous. About to cut that up and getting, put it on Twitter. Getting all the seniors <laughs> a touchdown and making everybody get in the game that dressed. Like, there's no reason. There's like, why wouldn't you want to go play there right. as, a, as a top recruit to right. go be a part of that? Outside of Alabama, there's not another college right now who can say you need to be playing here. Obviously, Texas Longhorns has like this $80 million locker room. This is the coolest thing you've ever seen. And there's other places that we can Michigan recruit. Michigan and Oklahoma, Notre Dame, Ohio and State. Notre Dame has a fight. You know, there's play, There's places to play. Yeah. But why would you not want right. to go be a Clemson Tiger if you're not if you can't make it to Bama? I don't get it. I, I mean, you could go wear better looking jerseys and be a Gamecock, but mm. I mean, Dabo you could, is Dabo. You gonna say the Gamecocks are better? This is the first thing I've disagreed with you on uh, so far. It's just purple and orange. I mean, that just doesn't oh, get great. too much uglier. Do you know what though? I heard is so. I did. I was a new fact here, or new new um, fun fact that I learned from another Clemson fan is that 
Purple was never an original color. It was like dark blue or something, and they wore them so much it got faded and turned purple, and they stuck with it. But now, Dabo is saying that that wasn't original colors, and we're not wearing purple anymore. It's just orange and white. Really? So no more purple outs. Well, that's great. Every once in a while, we'd wear all purple, and that shit was tight, man. That shit was, it was like an atmosphere, and you knew that, oh, snap, we're wearing purple. This is about to be it. That's the best thing I've heard all day. No more purples? Yep. No more purples. I don't Get think. Rid of Unless what I was told co- is incorrect. She seemed uh, seemed like a credible source. She wrote for a newspaper. so <laughs> Some of those purple jerseys didn't look terrible. Yeah. It's, just, it's just, I'm just looking through a Gamecocks eye. There, you, sure. you know, it could be blue and white and red. I don't, right, you know, it right. could be any color. It could be, if you wore Garnet in black, <laughs> it would make me throw up in my mouth. Yeah. But we wear Garnet in black. Right. And I like it. And, and it's just the mascots, my biggest issue. Well, I mean, at least ours can't potentially get loose and kill somebody. <laughs> we don't actually have a tiger, though, so that's kind of a bummer and safe at the same time. That's true. I get, like well, LSU has a dang tiger. I think I'm Auburn saying. has like, a you're tiger. Really taking a chance on somebody getting mauled? We're not, not trying to. Ti- we're not trying to ra- wrangle a tiger. Why would you try and <laughs> take that guy out of his natural element and put him in a little box? I like it, but not not to say that Sir Big Spur, that our you know our <laughs> actual gamecock that we have, not to say that that guy couldn't go take your eyeball out. All right, it's okay. <laughs> Enough of the college talk. All right, so let's put Will Mike Williams up against somebody here. What uh, would you rather have, uh, Mike Williams or Chris Godwin? Mm. That's, that's a toughie. That's a good question. Yeah, when I think about Chris Godwin, I immediately think about Mike Evans and mm-hmm. OJ Howard, mm-hmm. two staples. Obviously, OJ Howard's just now coming into his own. He's a super young, super athletic, Megatron looking guy. He looks like Calvin Johnson at a tight end position. I'll stand by that and. He's an absolute freak. He's a monster. And he's just now starting to get targets. So I had to think about that. And then you got at Mr. Humphreys, you know, who you <laughs> have a Clemson guy. You basically you need to just shake his hand because yeah. he's a legit receiver. And we've been waiting for like two or three years now for him to stop getting run. Right. And when they're trying to go down the field, he's out there doing his thing. He got way more snaps than Chris Godwin in the last couple of weeks. And he's got the easiest job out there. I mean, you got Deshaun well, stretching the field. Right. Mike Evans requires all this attention and. You know, yeah. I mean, Boom. I don't know how it could get any easier for Humphreys, but yeah, I like, I like what Chris Godwin does. I just feel like Williams is just a bigger, faster, stronger Chris Godwin. Maybe he's not necessarily faster per se, but Chris Godwin I, was pretty fast. I think he ran a four four or something. Yeah, he, he, you know, he's just. He's a smaller. He's 6'2", not quite as big. There's nothing wrong with being 6'2", 212. No, right. And in this day and age, in this NFL, it might even be – the you could plug right into the Ram system and you don't have to be 6'4", 220. But I'll take it. Sure. You know, so I, I would – I have no problem if you lean Chris Godwin there. I would and, – and DLF ADP actually has Mike Williams a couple points ahead of Chris Godwin as mm. of last month anyway, which actually surprised me. I thought I was going to be in the overwhelming – minority on that spot Mm -hmm. but i would i would if i had to pick one and just put them on my team for somebody that was going to be in my lineup every week making a significant difference uh, the upside is with mike williams right maybe the safer play is chris godwin but i don't play it safe at wide receiver i take huge home run cuts at wide receiver because i can play it safer i can take a third round pick and buy a veteran and if I have to buy even a solid veteran, I can play, take a second round pick and buy a veteran when I in, in the off season. <clears throat> I'd have to agree, even though I mean Chris Godwin has, has he's got four touchdowns this year on thirty receptions, more yardage. Maybe not the average is not quite as big, but I mean he's he's coming out and showing out. Yeah, but that's double the catches for half for the same amount of touch for one less touchdown. That's fair. Just saying, yeah. Mike. Ev- um, Mike, Mike Williams, Williams. Is a, he's a red zone machine, man. and he's in not only red zone machine, like one catch, 55 yards, touchdown, like that, like you said, he right. can catch the bombs. It's not just, he's a, a late separator. It's not, <laughs> he hits a turbo button. It's, right. It's not just and box awesome. you, it's not just boxing you out in the end zone for these touchdowns. He can and will box you out in the end zone. Absolutely. But he can also catch it like this past week, his touchdown, that 30 yard catch and run. I thought that was Tyrell Williams for a second. And then I really kind of squinted and i was like wait he's way too big to be tyrell mm-hmm. williams you yeah. know and then all of a sudden he was in the end zone and you could tell it was mike williams but i mean that was not like a fade route right he called it on the sidelines and made something happen right and that's i'll take mike williams mike williams or doug baldwin yikes 
How are you going to ask me about my boy? I know. Uh, all right. So we had a Patreon question the other day, and somebody was asking about Mike about Doug Baldwin. I think it, I think he put Doug Baldwin versus Philip Lindsay, and I said my exact answer was nobody likes Doug Baldwin more than me, but. Basically, with the philosophy of the Seattle Seahawks right now, Russell Wilson's attempts have bottomed out. And even watching that game back this week, the before the Chargers really took a really before the Chargers had him by the throat mm-hmm. up two t- up t- up two scores, Russell started have, having to air it out because of the way they had you know they were down multiple scores and they had to throw it a bunch. Halfway through the second quarter, six minutes to go in the second quarter. Russell Wilson had had six pass attempts and they had ran the ball 12, 13 times. Chris Carson was looking good until he asked to come out because he's a little nicked up. Mike Davis was looking decent. They were doing what they were made to do. Nick Van Etz, like one of the best tight ends, blocking tight ends in the league right now. And that's just the philosophy that we've talked about for weeks on here about what the Seahawks are doing with their run game. And it's making W's. Now, the Chargers go in there and handle business in Seattle, which is a huge – it's a much bigger win for the Chargers than it is a loss for the Seahawks. Right. So Because they really handled it. And then, and then you know, the Seahawks battled and they didn't quit and they cut it and they, they scored at the end and helped my teaser. And I didn't lose because they scored that touchdown at the end of the game. But <laughs> Doug Baldwin out there looking good, catches a 40-yard fly route down the sideline, um, had another ball that was taken away by right. penalty. Seemed like and he had more production than Doug what the Baldwin stat line had said. a bit had a busier, had a better looking game than those 12, 11 points or whatever he had, four for seventy or something yep, like that. Four for seventy seven. All something. right. So he had a better game than that four for seventy seven. He's a much better receiver than that, but they're not throwing the ball. And when they do, they got, you know, Tyler David Lockett. Moore. Tyler Lockett's been solid. He hasn't been phenomenal, but he's been solid. And he's catching touchdowns. And David Moore's been a touchdown hog. Right. And he's not the best wide receiver I've ever seen, but he's a really solid little prospect here. And he's not little. And he's getting hit between him and Lockett. They're stealing touchdowns Mm -hmm. from Baldwin. So that's a long story to say I really love Baldwin. But he's... (laughs) You know, not getting any younger, even though I think he's got the mindset and the philosophy and the work ethic to play many years in this league until something happens with the Seahawks, unless you're in that game script where you're playing from behind, which obviously they're playing slow ball. They take the air out of the ball right now by their stance on the game, the way they approach it, the way they're practicing. They don't want to air it out. That's what we thought Doug Baldwin was going to get. A ton of targets. It's what he was getting the last couple of years. He's also playing on a bum knee and then hurt his knee, uh, his other knee, and right. Well, it's not yet, yeah, but he doesn't look sluggish. He out there. was hurt to begin the year, and that's definitely nobody's fault but his. You can't throw him the ball if he's on the sidelines. We talked about that a couple times already tonight. So, but he's come back and he looks healthy and he looked really good this week. Coming out, I think did the Seahawks just have a bye? Could have sworn they had a bye. Pretty sure Doug Baldwin was on my line, on my bench with a bye week recently. Anyway, I I think he looked good coming out of a bye week. Um, I I think maybe Mike Williams is the right answer for Dynasty because at this point there's no chance that Doug Baldwin can get I, right now in a vacuum his value can go up because he's taking a big dip this year but he was still you know third for it's just he was a second to third round startup pick last year after a bit, couple big seasons people finally caught on that Doug Baldwin was really good. And then this year, going into the year, I think he was a fourth-round draft pick. And just being a 30-year-old receiver, you have no chance but to work backwards down that a, that ADP startup. Mm-hmm. And Mike Williams is already, it, as a young man just now playing in his second year in the middle of the fifth round, they're going to pass in the night like two ships. One's going one direction, one's going the other. If I need, If I need two years of production... I feel like I'll probably be safer with Doug Baldwin. Right. Now, with the offense that the Seattle Seahawks are working on right now, maybe that that's – I mean, they've obviously, in the last couple of weeks, one's getting it with one catch for 55-yard touchdown and one's getting it with four catches for 70. It's the same score. Right. You know? So you're probably better off to have Mike Williams at this point going forward in Dynasty than Doug Baldwin. That being said – I'm all about buying Doug Baldwin cheap. 
Right. Give it to me. Yeah. Give me some Doug Baldwin on the cheap. I think he, I think he's a great opportunity right now to go buy Doug Baldwin cheap, and I think I'd agree that I'd rather have Mike Williams. Um, dang, what was the question that I – oh, so I, this is the thing for me with Mike Williams, and, and maybe it's an easy answer. I feel like it's worth bringing up. Phillip Rivers has one more year left on his contract. He's said He said before the team moved to, to Los Angeles that he didn't want – he was going to retire if they moved to Los Angeles. Yeah. They moved. He signed a three-year deal. He's on next year is the last year of that deal. He'll be, he'll be 37. Do you think he's coming back? Well, and based on – I think he's going to fill it up again. Based on other types of arguments just like this with other players, I've talked about it with Big Ben and Drew Brees, and I just – a couple years ago I really missed out because I was, we, I was thinking about how old Drew Brees was and – it had, it's it's very much in play here with Philip Rivers. When the team's losing, the old quarterback looks older. It just happens, you know. And so, like Philip Rivers, he's like, I don't know how much longer I want to play. But they're on a win streak right now, and they're actually if they they actually won that game despite the kicker, mm-hmm. and they cut them. Mm-hmm. Like they're not they've. We all know that if they didn't start the season last year with Young Way Koo, Young Way Koo missing all those field goals, they make the playoffs. Right. And so winning fixes everything. Winning makes a 37-year-old quarterback feel 33. And Phillip Rivers is feeling great right now. So I don't, I, I don't like these types of questions to speculate on a guy coming back or not. But Phillip, Phillip Rivers is looking better now than he has for the last couple of years because winning fixes everything. Mm-hmm. And they're on this heater. They got a good run game. This is the first year in however many years that they haven't been depleted by injuries, and you thought it was going to happen. They still are, sort of. They, but well, they haven't it, had Bosa. They haven't had uh, Vanette. Right, no, no um, who's not Vanette? Oh, you're talking about a the cornerback. Corner. Yeah, and then Verrett, not Vanette. Verrett, right. Verrett. And then, and then and the tight end got hurt in the first Hunter days. Henry, Hunter yep. Henry goes down in the first day of OTAs. And so, like, you thought – that the doomsday was coming again, but they've held out and they've, they're on this winning streak. So I like Phillip Rivers. If they don't just crumble to pieces over the back half of the season and miss the playoffs, for him to have a run in him and come back again. I'm speculating again, and I don't like speculating on quarterbacks and whether they're playing or not, but he looks younger now, and that's what happens when you win. So, But it, I missed out on taking advantage of liking what I saw out of Michael Thomas for the Saints because – the Saints were supposed to be good, and then they were losing, and then they were good, and then they were losing, and all of a sudden Drew Brees looks old. Not that he wasn't, you know, putting up stats, but well, they're just rushing the shit out of the ball. Those stats look different. And his stats went down as Alvin Kamara and well, that was last Mark year, right? But even like two years ago, like they would without necessarily the great running game like Alvin Kamara gave them. They still just when you're when you're not winning, those fantasy points don't seem as important. I, I, it's it's weird, you know. Like I get, it's they would say they've seemed fine to a twenty eight, twenty nine year old quarterback. Like Matt, when the Falcons lose, Matt Ryan doesn't feel like he's about to retire, right? Because he's not old. 30, but yeah. when the Saints started losing, they were like, "Well, we don't know." They were they were actually playing around with that contract two years ago. Remember that they were not giving. He didn't sign an extension because he didn't know what Drew he wanted Brees to do. Might not be a saint. That was a real right. thing. They were like, he might retire. He might go play somewhere else. Blah blah blah. And then you know, and then he comes back, and all of a sudden the defense is good, and they got Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas is a stud, and now he looks thirty five again. And so I just I don't want to miss out on a Mike Williams thinking about. Phil Phillip Rivers, Rivers maybe not being here. Right. I'm not going right. to play that game. All right. That's what I wanted to hear. Fair enough. All right. Well, uh, that's going to do it for today's free show. We're about to go jump over to the Patreon side of things and get a bunch of questions answered there. Got a bunch of good uh, stuff on the docket. Um, I, can't, I don't know all the specifics. We're about to t- talk about a ton of things. Uh, uh, we got some good questions, and we got some good trade uh, things to go through with some guys about what they – and we got some celebration celebration laps on the – Dalvin Cook trades we were talking about. Get we didn't think he was going to play this week, and they had the bye week coming up. But we had a couple guys that were in some serious discussions over the last couple of weeks to pick up Dalvin Cook, and we were talking about getting those deals done before he hits the field healthy again. And they got there at least two guys I know for sure got Dalvin Cook this past week, and then he comes out there and looks shot out of a cannon. Yes, it was blocked well, but he hit that hole so hard and rushed for that seventy yard run, looking like Dalvin Cook. And my specific point to one guy who was thinking about this trade was 
Dalvin Cook just being a PPR vacuum. Mm-hmm. And and they came into the season saying that, oh, well, Latavius Murray played real good down the stretch last year and we're going to be a 50-50 split. And as soon as the season got here, bang, it was Dalvin Cook. And when Dalvin Cook is healthy, there is no split. The Vikings don't care how good Latavius Murray looks when Dalvin's out because they know that when Dalvin's on the field, they are a better team, right. a better offense. And maybe they give Latavius – they keep him with some run just to try and minimize a little bit of this injury risk with Dalvin Cook. But, I mean, if they were going to do that, they would have held him out last week if they really cared about this risk of injury. First so, of all, they should – yes. That's the most aggravating thing in sports right now right. is bringing a guy back with a hamstring too early. Right. A week before a bye Freaking week. Bye. It's easy. It's easy math. So mad. But – the Vikings can't afford a, a stupid loss. Right, they got beat up by the Bills, right. and then they got beat by the they got beat by the Saints and a fumble going into halftime by Thielen. That game gets changed, and then they got blown out by the Saints. So I understand just having the threat. And he played well and Dalvin came out Cook. healthy, so it right. all worked and out. They got the W, and that's right. all the Vikings. The, yes, the Vikings care about their young tailback, but you know what else they care about? They came into the league this year, coming to the season as one as a Super Bowl favorite. Mm-hmm. Maybe the NFC Super Bowl favorite for a lot of people because they just signed an $80 million quarterback. And they don't care about the next five years for Dalvin Cook. They care about this year because people are upset that they're not looking better as a team. Right. And obviously they had lost lost Everson Griffin for a couple of weeks, an absolute difference maker on defense with some mental issues. He's back, and the team's starting to click a little bit. You hope that Stephon Diggs comes back quickly and this team can really get on all cylinders. If they can get Dalvin Cook defense out of the bye. Playing well. Holy cow. A uh, little preview here for Patreon. We're gonna we got an Amari Cooper question. We got a Baker Mayfield question. We got some uh, a carry on trade on the table. Boom. We got a Galloway trade on the table. Boom. So uh, a lot a lot of things uh, to get to over on Patreon. If you guys want to check that out, you're going to get an extra hour plus of content every single week. After six months of giving us the five dollar holler, you get a free T-shirt. Uh, t-shirt comes with it, so that dang near pays for itself. The membership, not to mention access to the community page, get your questions answered, whether it be via text or you answer it on the free show or we answer it on the Patreon show or we take it to YouTube live. There's right. just so many ways we can answer our patrons' questions. Right, all, all that fun stuff you said, Jay. And then and then one of the guys that hooked us up two weeks ago, he jumped on the train after we came out and said, hey, guys, we need some help. You know, this is a lot. We put in a lot of effort. We've been doing this for three years. We see the downloads. We see all you guys hit, you know, hitting us up through the different um, ways that you can talk to us and, and all that good stuff. But his his exact reaction to that was it's the least I could do is give you five bucks. I've been listening to you for three years. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it's, it's one of those things, you know, we know Rome wasn't built in a day, but, and maybe not everybody's got, you know, $50 a month to give us. But if everybody joins in, if, if half of you guys would throw us five bucks a month, we'd be able to just make sure this thing keeps coming. Right. And so that's uh and improving and growing. Right. And exactly. And being able to go farther and doing more and so and we've videos we've, coming. One day we're going to have a video. Right. And there, there's there, you know there's Jay Wayne knows how to video this thing up. It's just a lot of work. He is kind of a videographer. Right. You know. <laughs> yeah, whatever that cinematographer. It's just well, see sure, yeah. Videographer? Right. Videographer? Man. Yeah, you that combine up? them. Yeah, you That's make. awesome. <laughs> we make up words around here. We give you new, we add to your vocabulary. We right. probably take away from your vocabulary. Yikes. But we definitely don't take away from your Dynasty Fantasy football team, and that's what matters. So we appreciate, we need you to click on our website, go to the ffdynasty.com, look at the middle of the page to the right. It says become a patron. And if you're like me and you're not the biggest on new technology stuff and you don't like change, I get it. I didn't even like change. I fought the first couple of weeks to get on Patreon and figure out how to answer these people's questions. But now I was born for this. I love it. I'm I'm answering questions on Friday night. Like I got my alarm set at 8:30 p.m. Me and my wife were joking the other night because we're so old. We got the alarm set at the house at 8:40 on a Friday night. We're like we ain't even going back outside, much less going downtown to do something fun. And I'm like answering people's questions. She's like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "I'm just answering these trade questions. It's freaking awesome. I love doing it." And we got all that good stuff going for you. It's five bucks. You know, so right. and you don't like change. You don't want to know how to use a new a new website. It's super easy. There's an app. It's, there's an app for it. It's interactive right through your email. Bang, bang. You get a notification. You ask a question. It tells you when we answered it. All that good stuff. And at the end of the day, if you're like, man, I don't really even have, I don't want to send a ton of trade questions in. 
five dollars really help us out we call it the five dollar holler to try to make fun of it but literally all we need some people pay more than that because they're awesome and but everybody in there that's throwing us five dollars just makes this continue that much longer that much harder help us out absolutely and uh hit us up anywhere else you'd like to twitter at the ff dynasty I am C Myers. Casey's not with us this week. You can find him there. Dynasty Big Co. at Dynasty Big Co. at Jay Wayne's World. If you're on five, if you're on iTunes, please hit us with that five star review, and uh, go to YouTube. Give us a subscription. We're going live on Sundays and answering sit start questions. Patreons have priority on that, but you can get hit the little notification button, and you'll be notified anytime we put up a new video. We're cutting up this podcast and throwing it out there and giving you a little more granular search. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening to us. Uh, let us know what was your fantasy. See, <laughs> we're gonna get out of here. Till next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasties. Married to the game.